You've been asked here to witness a police roundup of some of the most dangerous public enemies at large today. Now, you may think that the G-men are taking care of public enemies, and so they are, of human public enemies. But we in this department are concerned with public enemies who are not gangsters or living persons, but so-called inanimate objects. Inanimate objects which are not supposed to be alive or to have minds of their own, but which have nevertheless definite criminal personalities and are as much a menace to human society as any bandits or gangsters. Now, these so-called inanimate objects must be attacked like living criminals. Otherwise, they will attack us and ultimately crush us as a nation. Now, here are a few that my men have brought in during the past 24 hours. Watch carefully so that you may protect yourselves against them and their nefarious ilk. Here, for example, under ordinary circumstances, a perfectly regular shoelace, apparently sound and apparently inanimate. Now, in an emergency, as this man will soon discover, it develops an absolutely antisocial personality. Therefore, the only way to treat a thing like this is to do as we would do with a human public offender. Fix it so that it never will be able to set itself against the social order again. Exterminate it. Often reformers come to me and suggest that we use reason in dealing with these criminals. But how are you going to reason with a window shade? Now, all this man wants to do is to make the two shades even. Not very much to ask of an ordinary window shade. But now we see how the real character of the criminal is revealed. Now a test case illustrating how some of these deliberately unfriendly characters do their work. Ordinary bedroom slippers. Inanimate, you say. Just watch. Criminals like this are crafty, you see. They allow themselves to be arranged with a view to cooperation. Give every evidence of public spirit. And now for the dirty work. Ah, night prowlers. <laughs> With public enemies of this type, there can be no appeasement. It's a case of war, total war, and halfway measures will not do. I want a policeman. Another vicious character who frequently works at night is the common handkerchief.
Now, a much smarter, more wily public enemy is the newspaper. Here we must match wits with wits, and the best that we can hope for is a draw. To speak of the newspaper as human in its maneuvers is understating the case. As you will see, when we give this newspaper to a man and have him try to read it in a slight breeze. Now, the newspaper knows that the man is going to try to read it. And the newspaper has already mapped out its campaign to prevent the man from doing it. Very well, Mr. Newspaper. We call him Mr. Newspaper now. Later on, we'll think of some other names. Now, this man is obviously going about it in the wrong way. He's trying to turn to page seven. The newspaper knows he's trying to turn to page seven. He'll have a long gray beard before he gets to page seven this way. He should make the newspaper think that he wants to turn to page 14, like this. Well, I guess I'll turn to page 14. Well, this is a New York newspaper, and it's pretty wise to all the old tricks. A man will just have to use brute force. The only trouble with this method of attack is that by the time you've got the newspaper subdued, it's not fit for reading. Although violence may be used in dealing with characters like these, we on the inside have often found that violence may defeat its own purpose. As, for instance, in the case of this typewriter ribbon. Now, everyone knows how to put a typewriter ribbon in a typewriter, but only a student of the criminal mind knows how mean a personality the ribbon can have. Here is the personification of honoriness and cussedness. So you see, violence in this case only spoils the whole campaign for law and order. Violence was just what the ribbon was hoping for in the first place. The machine is wrecked, the operator is in a state of collapse, and the ribbon is very happy. The use of violence against an inanimate public enemy may actually endanger human life. As, for instance, in the case of this dress tie here. You see, violence is not only enabling the criminal to carry on the work of sabotage that had already planned in its original outline of battle, but is actually placing the life of the man in jeopardy. The best thing he can do is to yell for help. Mighty close call there. Only the prompt assistance of his wife saved the man from becoming just another victim of the tie. So you've seen some of the dangerous enemies that my department has rounded up today. Enemies of society who will get us if we don't get them first. As is the custom in this department, we deal harshly with such characters. There's no compromise here, and we recommend the same course to you. Well, oh, Sweeney, Yes, Captain. Got some choice ones for you to hear today. Oh, yeah. Give them the works. Here's a complaint for you to sign.